Hey, good morning. Pat Ziemer here with MagnaWave. Welcome to the Tuesday morning edition of MagnaWave Office Hours. I come to you every Tuesday morning to answer any questions you may have about the health and wellness aspects of MagnaWaving and PEMF. And so I'm here to answer any questions. If you have questions, just put them in the chat box on the Facebook page here and I'd be happy uh, to answer them. I've got a couple of questions that I've been uh, asked uh, to go over this, this week. I've got an area of conversation with regard to business building uh, I thought we would also discuss and, and discuss uh, and but I'm I, at this point um, I just think we need to take notice of the day September 11th where were you on September 11th uh, 2001 I can tell you exactly where I was and and, and what I was doing and um, it was a, a game changer for us because at that point I was in the aviation business and I was directly impacted by everything that was going on with aviation that day and at that particular time so um, you know my heart goes out to everybody that lost their lives and their families and that whole thing uh, during 9-11 and and I feel that we just need to just take just a second or two and, and uh, think about that and remember it and, and give some silence to that. So um, think about it today, and, and uh, one of the things that I want to discuss here in a, in a few minutes is passion. Uh, what is your passion? Where are you going? Uh, what are you doing uh, for your health and wellness, for your business? All those kind of things. So much changed that day um, for me personally, as I've already said, and, and I had to make some real hard decisions over the next couple, two or three months uh, about my life, about the direction we were going to go, and ultimately I ended up uh, in the world of PEMF and, and uh, magna waving along the way, and, and so passion, uh, desire, survival, all of those things <laughs> came into play. So perhaps we can uh, discuss that a little bit today. If you'd like to talk with me, if you want to share uh, what you were doing that day or what that impact had on your life, that's fine. I'm not going to, it's not a 9-11 discussion all day long but if you know if you got some thoughts you want to share it's 502-599-9722 502-599-9722 if you'd like to uh, give me a call and visit a little bit okay a uh, couple of questions uh, I was asked to go over today is basically the um, uh, formation of oxygenation what role oxygenation plays in magna waving and PMF therapy delivery and how does it how does it work um, so what we'll do is I'm going to pull up a um, graphic here on the website and kind of discuss that with you is it up um, Brad Okay, good deal, because I, I got a little delay, so what I'm seeing on my screen is not necessarily what uh, you're seeing, because uh, you're seeing it a different... Uh, anyway, here we go. So, as I want to show you on this particular graphic, you can see there, there's a, uh, a hand with a wrist that shows the, the magna wave signal going up through the hand, and that exemplifies that the signal goes all the way through, goes all the way through the body, if you will, as you're, you're magna waving. And then on to the right of that, that on your screen you'll see there's uh, two arteries uh, one uh, with the blood cells kind of singular and moving smoothly the other one all clumped up and moving uh, more slowly and so what happens what what takes place uh, with the magna wave is it the signal the high voltage the higher signal penetrates everything it makes the cell membrane more permeable allowing it to take on more oxygen that's around it that's in the body that the body produces through our breathing and the lungs and that whole thing you'll notice on the the one that's kind of jumbled up what happens that's called rolu uh, where the blood cells will stack up and they'll, they'll gum up against each other and they can't really function properly because they're not getting all the oxygen uh, that they need to be healthy cells. Well, what we do with the penetration of the magna wave, we penetrate the edges of those cells, allowing them to better take on oxygen. And as they begin to take on oxygen, as you can see in the other graphic there, they begin to flow more smoothly, they're better, they're healthier, they're, they're, they're in balance with their power and their energy that they're supposed to have. So what that does is that allows the cells, uh, and we can come back to me now, Brad, if you will, it allows the cells to uh, better take on the oxygen that's available to them. Well, 
what reduces inflammation is oxygen. The oxygen in the blood cells allows them to go to the area of inflammation, relieve that inflammation, allow it to go down, let the body better heal itself, and therefore relieve pain. And, and that's the whole basis uh, to the oxygenation thing. It, it, we're just setting the body up to better oxygenate itself. And that's because our signal is, penetrates the, uh, the whole body. If you can show me the other graphic, uh, Brad, I'll explain that a little bit as well. So what happens, as you can see here on this particular graphic that we're presenting, is a lot of companies with lower power devices, and they all work, they all do their thing. It's just a matter of speed. Uh, and a lower power device does not penetrate as deeply, does not penetrate, they, they talk about microcirculation, uh, working from the basis of microcirculation. Well, that's fine and it takes a long time or amount of time for that microcirculation to penetrate and be able to affect the body. That's why treatment times are an hour, treatment times are a half hour every day and you do it all the time, again, which is fine and works well. It just takes a longer period of time. Whereas with the MagnaWave, you can see that when we penetrate that shoulder area, we're doing the entire shoulder area. The bone, the cartilage, the tendon, the soft tissue, everything is getting better oxygenated and that allows that blood to move through the body uh, more rapidly to help the health of the blood cells and the body at that point in time. So that gives you an idea of the depth of penetration, the power that we put into the body. Now that doesn't have to be a throbbing signal in order to do that. It's a comfortable signal and the power is there. You're just working to get it uh, comfortably uh, as much energy as you as you want to get into the body so that kind of describes and shows the the difference between the high power and the low power as far as penetration and speed of work thanks Brad and uh, so I hope that answers that question if you have any other questions uh, with regard to that just put them up there and I'd be more than happy uh, to answer them for you um, at this point good morning everyone thanks for thanks for being here with us with that also, I, I want to cover a little bit. People ask, what's the difference between a digital machine and a spark gap machine? And I want to kind of go over this because the digital machines, when they produce a signal, uh, the signal is a little at the top. The, the, the benefit of the signal is when the signal goes up and the rapid decline. That's where Dr. Dennis and the NASA study found that the healing aspects of the PEMFR is on the rapid decline of the signal and then it stops and it, then it fires again. With the spark chamber machines, because of the voltage required to cause them to fire, the, the signal is more pointed, if you will. And it, as you turn it on, you feel it. You feel it more and you turn it up to where you're comfortable. On the digital machines, the signal at the top is just a little bit rounded off kind of like a pencil that's been used a little bit it's a little duller and uh, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't write perfectly and do everything you want it to do but what happens there is you can take more energy comfortably with a digital machine than you sometimes can with the spark chamber machine that's and that's the biggest deep biggest difference somebody says well I, I could turn it up all the way on this particular device yeah and you're comfortable and you're getting a massive amount of energy into the area and you're helping the oxygenization you're helping the health, the, the health of your cells and it's a good thing on the spark chamber machine that's what we've had forever so that's the basis of the industry pretty much uh, you can get a lot of energy but sometimes you get you got plenty and then you stop there so that's the primary difference between the digital and the uh, spark gap machines. If I was talking with someone yesterday um, in, in Shannon in, in uh, Phoenix, in the Phoenix area, and um, the, the conversation was all she's ever used is the spark gap machines, spark plasma chamber, however you want to describe them machines, and that's what she's comfortable with. And I explained that. I said, if someone starts with a digital machine and they've never experienced the other devices, they're very happy. They understand how it works. That's what they learn. It's kind of like learning to drive a, a car with a stick shift or a car with an automatic transmission. If you learn to drive with a stick shift, you're fine. You can always drive with a stick shift and you do okay, even though the automatic transmission may be easier and you come to like it and so 
on and so forth. But that's the difference. What you're comfortable with is, is what works. They both work. They both are very effective in how they uh, present the uh, signal to the body and uh, help us have better health and wellness with those types of situations. Let's see if there's any questions here. Other other questions? Uh, not at this point. So again, if you have, oh, boy, I got way out of my thing there. I was trying to scan. So if you have a question, just uh, put it up there. And again, I'd be ha more than happy to, uh, to answer it for you um, at this time. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, uh, oh, they had another question. Uh, someone was, uh, sent me an email uh, this morning asking if they buy a machine from a third party, uh, does the warranty transfer? And the answer is if you buy a machine from a third party, if you contact the office, we can transfer and will transfer the warranty, any warranty that's remaining on that device. <clears throat> And uh, I think there's a $25 fee to to get that to get that handled. Yes, the warranty does transfer. The certifications go with the initial machine purchase and do not transfer. So if if someone wants to have a certification with a machine they buy from a third party, they can contact the office and we can get them into the program and, and that whole thing. And there is a charge associated with that. So that's the that's the uh, warranty transfer and the certification um, issue uh, at this point in time. Okay, let's see. So, you know, going back a little bit to, uh, I was going to talk about uh, business building. We get all the time, someone will ask me, okay, I want to buy this machine and I want to do business. I want to treat my own horses or I want to treat my own pets or I want to go work with local chiropractors or local veterinarians and, and, and do this. And I can tell you that today, compared to 17, 18 years, 17 years ago, uh, after 9-11, when I first started working with PEMF, uh, it, at that time, still, it was kind of, um, people would consider it voodoo or however, however you want to say it. They just weren't familiar with it in the United States. Now, uh, in other countries, in Europe, in Canada, in South America, uh, PEMF, uh, therapies and devices are uh, very accepted, utilized in, in health and wellness in Russia. I was speaking with a gentleman the other day in Russia and the amount of gear that they have and what they how they use PEMF as far as the, the medical system in other countries is amazing. It's a little different in the United States. That's because back years and years ago uh, when the, the, I don't know if it was the AMA or whoever, but they decided what was going to be considered medicine in schools and what they would teach. And they separated out massage and acupuncture and PEMF type of therapies and all of those things were separated out from medical practice and so then they had to stand on their own and build on their own and that's why they're separate and different today but in other countries that it wasn't done like that and it's more of an accepted thing so uh, at any rate that's the difference there when you when you start talking about that but uh, so someone's going to start a business. Today, uh, I figure that I always often talk to folks and say, we've reached what I consider a momentum. Uh, people know what this is. They call all the time. I mean, just like on the, on the website where we have a situation where we talk about treatments and someone can click that, they can put their information in and they'll be connected with the practitioner that is closest to them. And we've got well over 500 practitioners now around the country, over 2,000 uh, machines placed privately uh, around the country where some people do work outside of their, their per primary use of the device. But um, that number is changing all the time. And there's a lot more than 500 cities <laughs> in the United States where someone could establish and uh, provide these kind of services, whether it be for animals or people. Um, but the thing that I will say is it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you know, you, you, it, it depends on the situation. When I got started and I was, when I became moved from being a PEMF representative, uh, showing people equipment and then they would purchase the equipment and use it themselves uh, to the point where I became a therapist. And people ask me a lot at that point in time, well, what makes you a therapist? Well, I was a uh, I wasn't a paramedic, but I was an EMT studying to be a paramedic. I've got secondary degrees in math, in, in uh, microbiology and pathology. So I have, I had a background and, and I understood what I was trying to do and talk to people about. So, but at any rate, when I became the therapist, because I found this device and I needed to make money and I wanted to work, I had to go out and show people what it would do. I demoed and demoed and demoed and 
people would soon would soon see that it would help them feel better. It would help their knee. It would help their back. It helped their elbow. It would relieve their headaches. And they would let me at the time I was in the horse business totally, and they would let me work on their horses. And they'd get on those horses and see an immediate result. And so I was able to supplement and began making money from the get go, if you will, once as a business because I was in the business uh, since 9/11. I was in the new business, <laughs> and um, uh, things change certainly, but it just, it, it's not like falling off a log. I want everyone to understand that. There are some people that their areas are ripe and they can start their business and get a lot of business quickly and, and be very happy with that. And then there's other people that, that have to do more work and struggle potentially a little bit. And uh, I always say that, you know, if, and, and this is what's important, if you're considering this as a business or a venture to supplement something that you're already doing, you got to know it. You got to understand it. You need to know our website inside and out so you can answer those questions, understand what they're talking, what they're asking you, and be able to answer those questions confidently. Uh, yesterday, my wife had a stent put in two weeks ago uh, to into her heart, and we went back to for a follow up appointment yesterday with the doctor and the young lady that was in there. Hardly looked like she was the the nurse practitioner that came into the room. Hardly looked like she was out of high school. I mean, just a young lady, you know what I mean. So you, you, you could have been, could have been a young man, young lady, but just looked like they were hardly out of high school. But her knowledge of what she was showing us, what they did, the confidence with which she spoke, gave us volumes. And we both walked out of there thinking, "Wow, now we really understand how they did this and they did two of these and one of those and balloons and all that kind of stuff." We understood it totally, and, and so. Uh, that confidence is what you need as you are beginning to do this. And so if, as long as you believe in what you're doing and people see, people see it in you that you believe in what you're doing and you understand what you're doing. And if you have a good bedside manner, uh, meaning you get along with folks and, and, you, and you can exude these types of things, people will use you. You will be uh, ultimately successful in whatever you choose to do, um, whether it's complementary medicines or complementary products or whatever it is, you can be successful in this. But again, it's not like falling off a log and it doesn't happen overnight. And you need passion. You know, I, you know there are people, I, someone was saying, I heard on the radio yesterday that some huge number of people who come out of college uh, it was like 75% of the students that come out of college don't work in the area of their studies. They go off somewhere else for money. They go off somewhere else because they need a job or, you know, whatever. And so it comes down to the passion that they have. Do they, are they going to, to stay with it? And so I would ask you or someone who's considering this or working to build a business, what is your passion? What is it about? Uh, you and what you what do you want to um, accomplish uh, with with what you're doing uh, in this area uh, that you're doing? What is it? Tell me. Somebody put up there. Tell me what your what your passion is. What do you want to What do you want to uh, to accomplish? You know, it, it it's funny. Um, I, several years ago, or well, it's been several years now. At 17, 18 since 9/11, but. I was talking, I was participating in a group, a mastermind group that I'm in, and one of the participants, a lady from uh, um, the Phoenix, or from San Diego was talking about, and she wanted me to help write a chapter for a particular book that they were doing. And so she wanted to know a little bit about my business. I said, well, you know, I've been doing it for eight or seven or eight years with the MagnaWave, and, and we do this, and I've got some, some practitioners. And she said, well, what's your impact? And I said, what? What are you talking about? She said, what kind of impact are you having on the health and wellness of people? What, what, is, what is going on? And, uh, and I said, I don't know. I mean, I know how I do, and I know how a few people do uh, with their businesses and that type of thing. Well, she said, you ought to figure that up. And I did. I mean, I went back at the time, I think we had 250 practitioners, and I picked a took 250 practitioners, picked a very low annual amount of money that someone might earn to, to stay in business, and I was blown away by the 
15, 20 million dollar a year impact we were having at that time, if not higher, on people's livelihoods and people, and then, and then you can take it even a step further. You know, you go to McDonald's, they say over one billion served, and, and I was running some numbers of this the other day, and I really didn't finish them because I want to use them uh, as we discuss some of this, but if you take 500 practitioners, and let's just say the average practitioner does only five treatments a week, and you multiply that times 500 times 20 a month, and and it's, it's 20 days, and it's, a lot of people work 30 days a month, and the number of treatments that we have supplied, that we have provided since 2007, when we really got MagnaWave going, is staggering. The number of people and animals that have that have felt the results of of what we do. I mean, it's just it's just absolutely uh, amazing to to think about that. And the only reason we're sitting here this morning having this conversation is because it works. Uh, if you put your heart into it and you have the passion to do it, um, it it'll work for you and, and it can, it can uh, uh, the, the impact. And that's really <clears throat> pretty much where I am today. I mean, it, it's, we've been very fortunate. We're, we're very grateful that the business has grown and, and I'm, great, I'm grateful that my family is involved with me and, and uh, all the other employees. Just a few years ago, it was me. I mean, just a few years ago, five years ago, it was me and my wife, Debbie, and then Elaine comes on board. Today, we've got a support staff here at the office of some uh, 15 people and then a whole marketing support team that help us educate and, and the whole nine yards of another seven or eight, nine people and then the factories that we deal with and their support. It's just amazing, the the impact. And so for me, it, it's all really about, you know, you, people can talk about legacy and they can talk about what they want, but what excites me today is, is how we are helping people improve their health and wellness uh, around the world and certainly across the United States of America. And, for, and I'm thankful to you for that because you, you're doing it. You, the practitioners that are watching this program today, are you the people that are thinking about how can I develop this in my neighborhood, in my, in my town? Uh, it, it's a very admirable thing to do and that's, it, it's just exciting to uh, think that through. So if you have any comments, uh, please do. Let's see, what makes, okay, what makes, great question, uh, Jenna, what makes MagnaWave different from other PMF machines out there as well as other therapies? Well, we could talk about that for an hour. <laughs> um, as I was talking at the beginning of the program this morning, PEMF is PEMF. There are different levels of devices. Uh, there are low power machines uh, at, like the Beamer machine, the IMRS uh, machine. Uh, there are several different, uh, the Curatron, many different machines that are lower power machines. They're fine. They work. They're slower. That's all. And so if slow is okay because of what you're using it for, okay. Uh, the higher powered machines uh, that we have and some other companies have are quicker in providing their result. And so what, what makes us different, I think, is our depth, our quality, we, our education that we try to provide, the questions that we're here to answer, the transparency that we provide. Everything's on our website. All the pricing is there. Everything, how it works, is there. And, and so we don't want to cover anything or not have it out there or do anything. You know, it, it's all about... Uh, the transparency. So to me, that's where a lot of it comes to. You call the office and if I'm available in here, I'll answer your questions. If not, we have Aaron who's with us this morning on the program and Stephanie and Elaine and Lee. Everybody can answer varying levels of questions uh, right now. And we think that sets us apart to be able to, to do that. And, and we work every day to make sure that we're doing that as well as we can. And uh, just like anything else, we have good days and we have days that we could maybe do it better. And uh, so that's, that's what, it, what it's all about. And so the, the devices are very similar. You wanna make sure if you're, make sure that the company has been around for a while. You wanna make sure that, that someone's gonna stand behind what they're telling you is gonna happen. That's all very critical. And, and very, very important. Uh, when I first got into the business in 2002, after 9-11, when I was representing a company, people would look at me and say, why is it so expensive? 
I mean, at the time I was selling blankets, and they were ran anywhere from from for horses anywhere from three thousand to uh, six seven thousand dollars for the the uh, the devices, and they were all low power, but they worked. They were just slower. I've said that a million times. But people would say, why is it so expensive? It just can't be that much. And this company had been around already for 25 years, and they're big in other countries on the human side. And you know, and I, my answer was, do you want them here when you have a problem? They're here. They've been here for 25 years. They're going to stay here. It, that doesn't happen inexpensively. What does it take to build a car? Nowhere near $75,000 or whatever the amount of money that you're paying to, to build, to buy an automobile. But you want it serviced when it's done. You want to understand that it's got all the best safety on it and they're taking care of it. So it, it, everything costs and, and it's associated, you know, you know, you can grow your own vegetables in the backyard and a lot of people do and they're very good. Uh, but if you're going to take those vegetables to market and try to have a farm, it, there's a lot of expense associated with that and you know how to be able to do that. So that's where all of that kind of uh, comes from. And so what makes us different? Now, when you talk about the question, um, uh, where did it go? Oh, oh, God, a lot of questions coming up. Uh, where did the one go? The question... Uh, missed, it's kind of, can't find it. It'll come up here. Uh, where he's talking about the difference in other therapies. There are a lot of therapies that are very complementary with each other. For example, it could be a light therapy used in conjunction with MagnaWave PMF therapy, and they are very complementary. Could be laser used, could be vibration used. There are many things that are complementary. If you use complementary methods, uh, then you may get even more promising results than what you're looking for. Many different therapies can stand on their own. MagnaWave can certainly stand on its own as it's used and, and what it does to the body. But are complementary things beneficial? Absolutely. So there's you need to think about that. And if that's where the question was going, um, what what uh, uh, looking to do with, with other devices or other complementary devices. That's something that we're happy to discuss with you at, at any point in time if you want to discuss that further. So let me see here. My passion is to help every horse touch, every horse I touch feel its best. And you know, when you have a passion like that, uh, that that's incredible because you know when you walk up to a horse. I, I talked about it one day on, on this program. Uh, someone said, had sent a picture in and I was talking about it and they were treating the horse and they were curious as to why the horse was, uh, was a bit nervous and they weren't touching the horse. They had their coil up on the horse and they were standing back and the horse was not feeling their love, if you will. And my comment was, get up there and hold that horse's neck. Touch that horse so it can feel what you're doing, that you care about it. And and that's what I think we're, is being discussed here. Make you you want to touch, and your passion is to help those help those animals, and that and that's very incredible. And the same thing when you're working with a person, you put the coil on them. We don't sit there and hold the coil when we're treating someone's low back, but we sure can look them in the eye and tell them what's happening and explain to them what they're feeling, so they're more comfortable with that, and they they naturally are going to feel better. Are we trying to create a placebo? No, but what we are trying to do is make somebody understand that we are concerned and we believe in what we are doing. They will, it's a situation that they will certainly feel better or not. And when you start dealing with animals, and you know, people talk about that, well, what about the placebo effect on people? Well, people can think about things. Horses and, and dogs and cats don't. You put that on a horse and they feel better, you know it. And and that's what happens. And so that's the, the feeling uh, that you have. Uh, question. Uh, what are the most important ingredients for success starting a business in MagnaWay? Well, and, and I'll hit it one more time. You need to believe in what you're doing, and I need to see, or your customer needs to see and feel that you believe and understand what you're doing. You need to know what you're doing. You need to be comfortable. When they ask you a question, you need to study. You need to do the certification, learn the website inside and out. So when someone asks you a question, you can look them straight in the eye and say, this is what it does and this is how it does it and let me show you and, and move forward. So those ingredients, along with passion, along with work, uh, I've had people, they say, well, I, I go and I do a 10 minute demo for them on their horse. And I'm thinking, what did you do? It, it, you need to treat the horse to show a result. 
you, you, sure, you could put a coil or a person. You need, uh, yeah, I do a two minute demo. I put it on their shoulder and they feel it a little bit and then I stop. I need to make them feel better. I need to make them believe and understand what we're doing. So you got to be prepared to work. And, and believe me, I mean, we I was in on the road full time for seven or eight years traveling around the country going to every horse show, every chiropractic convention I could go to, every anything I could work in the the uh, flea markets doing treatments and showing people what what this would would do and but you got to be prepared to work you got to be prepared to show people what you're doing restaurants do it they give you a coupon come in here buy one get one free or, or buy this and get that and and in many cases come in for a free burger and then they know that well you're going to buy some french fries you're going to buy a soft drink and you're going to do this other stuff it takes work and and so the ingredients are being again being in a good family under where you have the support that you're looking for utilizing that support utilizing your knowledge and you boots to ground rubber to the road uh, making it work and and to that end I think I, I want to kind of address a little bit and then I'll go on to the next question um, we'll get into conversations well there's competition and I and someone starts giving it away for very cheap that doesn't help anybody and, and I'm not trying to tell you to all you know to, to be through the roof on your pricing you need to understand what different pricing models are because it varies from racehorses to performance horses to West it varies all over the board what you're doing but uh, it, you can't compete by by giving it away because then that cheapens what er, when I say give it away for for little money because you have to make money if you can't be successful and make money then no one is going to be successful and there's plenty plenty of areas people get focused well there's you know there first thing you do you ingredients uh, that you that you do Robert is you go out and you see it depending on what you're doing how many veterinarians are in your area and you start talking to them as best you can go to mixers business meet one or two of them and say this is what I'm doing can I show it to you they all have bad backs or bad ankles or knees and they want to feel better so there's a lot of different ways to work into that area but you got to do it you can't just say here I've, here's my card and I'd love to come work with you and and be done with it you got to learn how to text to these people how to email market to these people how to present yourself first thing somebody does is they're gonna go look at your Facebook page if they if they're interested at all in what you're doing or they're gonna go see if you have a website why does that matter because you you got to put forth that belief factor you got to put forth that desire you got to show that passion uh, that that you're dealing with and those are the places to do it and in this day and age that's where it's at the beautiful thing that you've got is that today it's a level playing field no one cares on the internet no one cares what your name is no one cares where you came from no one cares that you have a master's degree no one cares about any of that stuff what they care about is what they're looking for and can you provide it and it's a very level playing field that anybody can step up into and work in I mean when I started there was no competition there there was only three or four machines east of the Mississippi River Today, I've created some of my best competition, people that have worked with us, people have done things, and then they decide they want to go do something. That's business. That happens every day. That happens in, in everything. And, and all of a sudden, you've got a lot of competition. And today, for me, all I could do is run around the country. Facebook was just starting. All I could do was do it. And, and but now with the internet I mean there's so much knowledge there's so much energy that you can express there to show people what you're doing and so you've got a tremendous advantage today that I didn't have that people back in in the early 2000s and in, in 1998 and all this kind of stuff that you, you had to do it hard and but today it's the internet has changed the game you need to use it 
You need to understand how to use it and you need to know what it can do for you to be successful. So those are the agree, uh, ingredients, Robert. There's a bunch of them. We're gonna mix up this stew with a lot of different stuff into the stew and sometimes this one is gonna work and this one's not. And sometimes we need to fine tune this one and make it work better. And, and, uh, so that's, and that's one of the things that we're here to do for you. Uh, we, we have a marketing team, uh, we call the machine behind the machine that, that does an incredible job for us. And what they do for us, you can have in many respects. You can look at that and learn from it and share it and do it. And, uh, and it's amazing people don't do that. Well, I, you know, what do I do here? Well, look at what we're doing and and, uh, and mimic it. Look at what we're doing and utilize what you, and, and we'll work with you on that, and, and utilize what you can to build your credibility, your image, and maintain that type of stature. So I hope that answers uh, that particular question. Um, let's see, now how do I get more of my questions? Are there additional questions? If there are folks, put them up there. Um, challenging things to deal with when being in this business? Well, challenging would be education. If you're in a new area that hasn't been explored at this point, uh, then you're gonna to have to educate the people around you. I mean, and here's the deal. When I first started, I went out there and I'd say, hey, I'm doing this and can I show you what it is? And the first thing they would say is, is it FDA approved? Now I'm talking about animals. Is it FDA approved? Well, no, it doesn't have to be for animals. They, they didn't make any difference. That was their way of saying, my fence is up. Uh, do you have studies? Well, yeah, there's all kinds of, there's 2,000 studies. Well, do you have studies with your equipment? Well, no, but we're working on that. Well, they put their fence up. So people will put their defenses up. They all, we all do. You do, I do, anytime we're in that type of situation because we want to be protected. We want to take care of our pocketbook. We want to take care of what we're doing. If it helps my animal, great, I'm going to do it. But you got to work through it. So probably the biggest obstacle is education and showing these people what it will do, letting them really experience what it will do. And then keep going. You, you might have to show... Oh, I, I can't tell you <laughs> how many. I would go, the most astounding week in my life was I went to a horse show in St. Louis and there were probably 50 different farms represented or barns represented at this horse show. And, and uh, I had four or five that I was working in, but I'd walk around all the rest of them, they'd just look at me. You know, they'd nah. No, not today. Uh, I don't know. I don't believe in that hocus pocus and all this kind of stuff. But I worked when I, when the two weeks were up, and uh, I had a problem. My motorhome broke down on me, and I had to do some work on it. So I needed to make some money. The two weeks were up. I worked in like seven out of forty-five barns, and I had more cash in my pocket than I had had in a in a year. And because the people that believed in it used me. And I had a whole other, whole other group of people that I needed to, to educate and continue to work with. And over the years, over the years, I remember I've got one thoroughbred guy, I'm not gonna mention his name, uh, very nice guy. And, and I, we were always friendly to each other and got along, but he wouldn't buy. He, he wouldn't buy an ice cream from me if I gave it to him. He just, nope, I'm not going to take it. And, and it was just, just the way he was. And then all of a sudden, just last year, I'm going through some of our records, and I look down, and I, there's Tom, and he bought a machine. Didn't tell me. <laughs> didn't call me. <laughs> when I'd see him at the racetrack, didn't say anything until I found it in my things. I called him, Tom, <laughs> thanks, or, you know. And you know, I kind of played with him a little bit because he always was one of these guys that kind of approached it in that fashion. So, anyway, that that's you know, I, if you ask me questions, I can get going and, and do a lot of different uh, uh, thoughts on them. But Robert, that's what you want to look forward to. That's the biggest struggle in the business is is education and your belief and projection of that. Uh, you don't want to go into a doctor's office and the doctor scratches his head. Uh, let's see, I can't figure out how to pronounce this. Let me pull it up. You know, you want somebody that knows what they're doing, that they're going to help you feel better and take care of what's going on. And if you do that, and we can help you do that, you can, it, it can be good for you. Uh, okay, folks, any other questions? Put them up there. I'd be happy to answer them. You see anything else, Brett? Brad? I'm sorry. Um, I can't. I'm having the same problem I had last week. I'm not seeing. I don't think I'm seeing all the comments. 
Um, what happens if I click it? No? Okay. Um, well, Sean oops. Mills asked, is it safe to MagnaWave feet with a, with a pulse? I'm not sure if she means Pulse Pro or... Uh, no. Sean asked the question. What, what's the question again? Oh, here it is. I missed the answer on the feet. Sorry. Um, she scroll up. She asked it earlier. It's he. Um, I'm, I, I see I'm unable to scroll for some reason on my um, on my screen here. Well, she asks, is it safe to magna, magna wave feet with a pulse? Yes, most certainly. It's safe to magna wave um, feet. Um, uh, if you'll put that back up there just to make sure that I'm clear, Sean, and what Sean uh, knows and what you're, what you're asking, but for sure, it, it's safe to uh, MagnaWave feet with the Pulse Pro if that's what you're at, talking about and um, use the thing. It doesn't make any difference if they have shoes on. We're talking about horses. Uh, if they have shoes on or if they're barefoot, you can certainly uh, treat the feet. You want them to be comfortable. If they're not comfortable, they're not going to let you treat them. Whether you're putting a coil around the, the hoof with the butterfly or you're coming under the hoof with the zoom box and the, and the paddle, if, if it's too much, they're not, they're not going to want it to be there. So comfort and energy is the key and certainly safe to, uh, to MagnaWave. And, and in fact, I hope that answers the question. If not, uh, put something. Here we go. Uh, Sean knows feet. Uh, sore feet. Sean knows a hoof, oh, uh, okay, now I'm with you. A hoof with a pulse. A hoof that, that you can feel the heat in the hoof or that, that you can feel the, the, the flow in the foot. Most certainly, I mean, you've got a situation there that, that obviously there is inflammation. There is pain there. It is throbbing to a point. Uh, and it, but it is not bleeding. I mean, if you had a situation that was bleeding, that's a whole, whole other story. But if, if I'm, thank you for clarifying that, Sean. If there's a pulse in the foot and you can feel it, you can treat. And, and you can, you know, you might have two or three different ways of approaching that. Uh, one way would take the butterfly, put it at the front or the back of the hoof and treat it that way. Place the hoof on the, the hoof box, uh, the zoom box and, and paddle uh, to treat from the bottom coming up. You're going to improve the blood flow. By improving the blood flow, you're going to relieve that that throbbing, uh, if you will, in the area, and and you want to to approach it from that situation. Now, if it's a acute problem that's going on and the vet's involved and a lot of stuff happening, you want to certainly discuss. This is what we're going to do, uh, doctor. How do you feel? Um, and approach it from that type of situation. We do this with athletes a lot of times. I mean, they'll have an injury and they're throbbing, and, but the quicker we work on them, the quicker we deal with their knee or their hip or their shoulder, the more rapid the response is. In some cases, they will take a, 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 a ibuprofen or something to help the, the body be ready to deal with inflammation, help relieve some pain, and then we treat in concert and get them a more rapid response to the inflammation reduction that they're looking for and the body to go about better beginning to heal itself. So hope that helps, Sean. Uh, most certainly uh, is, is something to deal with. Okay, um, when will the hoof box be available for the Wave Pro and the Zoom Paddle? It is available now. We had some issue getting, there was a size difference and we had to get all that taken care of. But the, uh, the hoof box is available for the Wave Pro uh, and fits the uh, Wave Pro Paddle. The Wave Pro Paddle is larger than the uh, Zoom Paddle that we have for the, for the other machines by maybe an inch or not an inch, maybe a half inch or a quarter of an inch around. Just won't fit in the, in the old box, but yet we wanted to make a new box so they are all uh, snug and fit properly uh, in their in their respective uh, zoom boxes a great question thank you um, uh, Robert asked a question again what niches seem to be the easiest for success when first starting a business horses animals sports elderly etc well it uh, Robert it depends on your background and where you're going um, I had one gentleman early in my involvement with MagnaWave and, and rolling this out that was not really a horse guy. His wife had been around horses, and, and but he loved what we were doing and wanted to come into the business. And so I had to teach him how to be a horseman, if you will, how to be around horses, what to do. And really it presented an obstacle for him because people could see, could tell that he wasn't really comfortable 
around the animal and and really you know good in that in that respect so i encouraged him to start some some other areas he became excellent at, at what he unfortunately he passed away much too early but um so the the various niches are certainly there um and and it you know, we have some people that have worked with small animals and they get close to veterinarians and they talk to them and they end up working in concert with the veterinarians, maybe one to two, three days a week. We have a gentleman in Jacksonville, uh, Florida, that, that's working with a, a cardiologist, a chiropractors, um, surgeons, uh, orthopedic guys, and he's going to each one of their offices for a day a week. And they're scheduling their, their clients to come in and, and see and help this. My question to him was, well, why cardiologists? And he said, well, the doc told me, he said, a lot of these people that are having these problems, some of them have weight issues, some of them have stress in their life that are causing some of their heart problems and, and so on and so forth. So it can be any number of things. If he can make them feel better, they're more apt to take care of themselves and be more responsive to what he's talking about as a doctor from the cardiologist standpoint. Bingo. So they're all there. They're all, Robert, they're all going to take work. But if you're a horseman, it's easier to go to horses. If you are around a lot of animals and you go to dog shows and you have that, then there's a, there's a, a thing there. People, uh, we have found that, that taking care of their small animals, the arthritis in their pups and their big dogs and, and dysplasia and all these things that, that the machine can, can help with. Uh, we have a cat that we're working with now that's got some um, uh, birth defects and, and it suffers from some disease and uh, we're treating this cat and uh, it's a very popular cat and, and uh, working with the cat and the cat, they're saying that the cat's better than it's been for a long long time and responding well and and doing great can't say you know really get into that at this point but at, at any rate I would think that that the toughest of the niches that you told me would be elderly uh, not that they they do need it and they will need it but a lot of times when when folks get up in years they're just not comfortable with new stuff or they don't understand uh, what you're talking about or what you're what you're dealing with in the in the animal you know chiropractors uh, doctors in your area are certainly more open to discussing various uh, therapies again it'd be easier for you today to go talk to the you know there I don't know where, where you are how many chiropractors are in your area uh, but around here in Louisville Kentucky I don't, I don't know but there might be uh, 250 300 chiropractors uh, in this particular area. So there's a lot of folks to deal with and talk with and show them what it'll do and, and what it can do. All I can tell you is any of those niches are good. Athletes, what, what one thing, I don't know, you may have put athlete, uh, may have put athlete in there, animals, sport, yeah, sports, uh, certainly an area, um, uh, the, the CrossFit places where they where they work out. A young lady posted a video the other day after her workout, her shoulder was sore because she did lifting and uh, she's got a MagnaWave uh, Pulse Pro and she was showing how she was using it on her shoulder after she lifted to improve her recovery time. Again, you're gonna have to get these people to understand. The, the gymnasium's gonna have to buy into what you're doing, whether they buy in with money or they allow you to come and then begin to work and work out some type of, of relationship and association, but certainly, athletes and, and people golf uh, a lot of golfers have bad backs and so there's a way to go to these people and and get them to understand where you are but it's going to take work and um, you know a couple of them are, are naturals i mean you know we talk about gosh and this is an area that i'm really starting to get into you've heard of earthing and grounding and we've got a practitioner in the florida uh, does a lot of work in in the um, georgia area that that's working with grounding someone for a half hour before they treat horses are naturally typically grounded anyway if you're treating them in the in the stall or you're treating them in the shed row or someplace in cross ties where they're not standing on rubber or concrete so they they are more naturally grounded and that's maybe that's and when i started reading about this and understanding this why we had such rapid results in this area and, and uh, so if you if you are and that's a whole area that we're going to start talking about and, and doing some experimentation with, but is the grounding of the body and then supplying the energy to the body and getting the result uh, that we're looking for. So I, I would say that there's just a lot of things 
uh, opening up and a lot of things there. Robert, I hope that helped uh, answer your question. If you want to talk about it personally, I'd be more than happy to uh, uh, spend some time. Uh, Sean Knowles, uh, abscesses and or laminitis. Most certainly, um, we learned several years ago, practitioner in, in uh, Missouri, um, uh, busy calls me and says, what about abscesses? Can I treat abscesses? And I said, absolutely. And she said, well, here's what I'm going to do. And she said, I'm going to, it's front foot. I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to put the butterfly right on the bottom of the foot. And then I'm going to provide as much energy to turn the machine up as high as I can to try to work on that abscess in that foot. And I said, that certainly makes sense to me. She said, the doc's on with me. We're going to, we're going to do this. And she treated this horse twice and the abscess came out, the abscess blue, if you will, or, or whatever. And, and as you know, a lot of times that can take days. In some cases, it can take longer and through a lot of processes, through soaking and medication and, you know, everything. Uh, it, all kinds of different things that you might use for an abscess. But we found early on that if you treat that foot uh, with our devices, with high power devices, you can pull those abscesses in one, two, or maybe three treatments uh, over a couple of days and bingo. And we have just got nothing but those kind of results. Oh, of course, there's the one once in a while that just, no matter what you do, just doesn't get the result that you're looking for. But uh, overall, that's what we're seeing uh, with abscesses. And even to that end, um, when we talk about the semi machine, people are using the semi machine with the large wave wings to treat their horses or their small animals and people. But, uh, and so the question came, what's it gonna do on an abscess? And so we put that semi and what, what we did on an abscess with, with the bigger machines, we'll go six to eight minutes uh, as high as the animal can take. When you're, when you're talking about horses with the semi, we went uh, 30 minutes um, actually, I think she went two 30-minute treatments in a row. And then she turned around the next day and went back. Actually, it was two days because I was at the barn. We were doing a training. I went to the barn and we treated the horse again for 30 minutes. And the abscess, the abscess pulled. We pulled the abscess in just two treatments over two and a half, three days. And um, the time was longer using the semi, but it worked. So it's very beneficial, uh, Sean, when you're dealing with abscesses. Laminitis uh, it certainly is a situation where we start and we start having the, the interior of the hoof and the foot begin to delaminate, come apart, separate, which is catastrophic uh, to an animal. And what you're, what you're going to do by treating those is help with good, good, with good oxygenation and blood flow. You can slow that down, keep it from happening in many Many cases tried to to reverse it. There have been some there have been some situations where where people uh, very notable situations, but they have an, an animal that that's got a lot of problem and broke a broke an ankle, broke a leg, and they're treating it and they're treating the one and they forget the other one that he's putting all his weight on and started to suffer laminitis and and all of a sudden you got a problem because now you can't stand on one and you can't stand on the other. So if you're dealing with laminitis issues uh, in a horse uh, or something that could lead to that, treat both legs, treat both feet. Uh, so you've got everything going on in concert at the same time. Don't do one and forget the other and then all of a sudden it's a problem because when it becomes a problem, you got a serious problem now because you can't, where are you gonna stand? And, and how you're gonna how you're gonna deal with it. Uh, so uh, that takes me back to the very beginning, uh, back to uh, actually back to before MagnaWave when I was selling lower powered stuff and we and I had a hoof thing that we would use and a world champion horse just won the world championship at the at the horse show here in Kentucky. Saddlebred uh, founder. And, and the doctor called me uh, and said, you know, bring one of your things out here and let's treat this horse. I don't know what I'm going to do. He's, I'm going to lose it. And it just won the world championship two weeks prior. And when I got there, the horse was just laying, couldn't get up. And so we took the put, put this pad down, put, these, uh, put his feet on the pad, and we did it uh, for hours. Uh, and, and day and night, basically. But within a day and a half, two days, the horse was standing. And the horse recovered, was not able to compete anymore, but the horse recovered and, and they became a, um, a, a stud. And, and so, you know, you, you have those types of situations. It just works. 
and, and it just depends on, on how you approach it and, and where you go. So ab certainly, Sean, for abscesses and, and laminitis. If you're a practitioner with us, go back into the into the portal and, and see what's going on. Get the MagnaWave app and in, in the guidelines in the app, there's all types of protocols and guidelines in the app and we're adding things to that daily. To that end, I wanted, we've had some issues uh, with the app. Uh, just in the last couple of months with uh, errors and so forth and actually this I didn't understand it either there are like four or five servers involved with the app because it does different things and the way we we got it going and and we're certainly the app is a work in progress we're going to continue to improve it but we had one server of the five that had an issue and, and we they dug and they dug and they dug and they dug and they found it. And so they're telling me now that everything's in good shape. So get the app, get the guidelines are all there. Take Get back into the training portal and, and take a look at this stuff and understand it and learn it. Uh, because here's the deal. Uh, this goes to everybody when you're asking a question about abscesses or elbows or shoulders or that kind of thing. People are hearing this. People are reading this. They will search and here going back to the internet again. People will today, They when I was first selling years and years ago, it said, well, you got to touch somebody eight to ten times to get them to make a purchase or to believe in what you're doing. Them. Today, people will touch the topic five or six times themselves before they ever talk to you. And so they'll have an idea what they're talking about. And if they ask you and you don't know and they've read about it, you don't have the credibility. You don't have the authority that they're looking for because they will do that research on their own. They're looking for, just as you do, you know, Google it. You know, you put it in there and, and uh, uh, you know, we've launched, and I, I want to do that for you here in just a minute, but we've we've launched a new a new feature, and we're working with Alexa. Uh, Alexa's working with us now, and uh, we're working with, anyway, I'll show you, I'll tell you about it and, and show it to you. But people will search. People will learn what's going on. When I was set, Alexa launched yesterday, and we were going through it, and, and our marketing team put this wonderful package together, and we've got these live flash briefings now on Alexa, but I was having trouble deciding which or understanding which briefing that I was posting was going to play. And so I went to Google. How do I make sure which, how do I schedule my post, my flash briefings on Alexa? Bingo, there it was. Went right back in the thing, saw what I had to do, went to the scheduling feature that wasn't really showing up, but went to the scheduling feature and last night at at 0100 hours, it switched over to the next flash briefing. Let's see if I can bring that up here and let's hear today's, uh, let me bring up Alexa here. Make sure that we got everything turned up. So here we go. Come on, Alexa. Come on in. Okay. Hey, Alexa, what's my MagnaWave flash briefing for today? Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got my hearing aids on. Hold on. Let's start over. I'm hearing it, but you're not hearing it. So let's try this again. Was bitten by her dog. Oh. Her upper lip was badly damaged and required multiple stitches. The inflammation and scarring was severe, and she was told by her doctor that it would be six months until he could even begin to work on fixing her scarring and smile. Also, because of the inflammation and scarring, she was told that it would be several months before she would be able to perform and instruct comfortably. She began daily MagnaWave treatments four weeks after she was injured. And within one month of treatment with the MagnaWave Max and MagnaWave LP, Marilyn had her smile back. During the third month, she was able to once again sing and her face showed virtually no sign of scarring or disfigurement. MagnaWave improves oxygenation and blood flow, which enhances the body's ability to heal itself. And so that's the uh, flash briefing uh, for today. And... All you gotta do is go to Alexa and say, hey Alexa, or you gotta set it up. You go to go into your, if you have Alexa, you know how to do this, just go to Alexa. Go to the MagnaWave website, click on the uh, Alexa briefing, flash briefings, and you can begin to receive the MagnaWave flash briefings. There'll be a different tip, different protocol, different history, different uh, thing every day. It takes about a minute or so for, to, uh, to get the flash briefing, and we're excited about it. It's fun, and it's a great way to help provide some, some education to folks. So check out Alexa. 
Alexa. You can put it if you. I have an, an iPhone, and I can. You can download the Alexa app uh, onto your phone and use Alexa uh, as you would. We're also going to be working with. Um, uh, um, Siri, uh, and we're going to be working with the Google Home uh, situation. So whatever you have, as far as your helper, uh, this whole deal of this, this is another extenuation of voice and how it can, can work with you to help you build your business, uh, Robert, uh, and tell your people, your customers, go go get the Alexa flash briefing about MagnaWave, and that'll just help build credibility for you to uh, be more successful uh, in your particular business. My goodness, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. We have flown by this particular uh, program this morning, so uh, it's, it's probably time for us to go because I have another meeting to get to. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I hope you found this beneficial. I'll be back again next Tuesday. We are working on some, uh, been kind of behind on my webinars on specific topics. Uh, I'm going to get those fired up in the next week and uh, providing uh, certainly more in-depth webinars about specific topics of health and wellness and uh, working uh, the disease defense and going that way. Keep an eye out. The MagnaWave Express will be on the road going, coming to a city t near you for clinics and uh, uh, a meeting and greeting. So uh, we're excited about that as well. So have a great day. Thank you for joining me and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.